Hi, Bill Mobley for UCTV and the Brain Channel. I'm with Eric Hachaturian, who's chairman and president of the National Biomedical Research Ethics Council and uh, has had really a leadership role in a number of ways in the community. Um, Eric, thanks for being here. It's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, actually, I did my training in epidemiology and biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. Um, I've been involved in Alzheimer's research probably about now 15 years, and it's been a very sort of interesting ride to sort of see how this disease has grown from relative obscurity to now something of national, international importance. Mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's, I think, deserved national importance and international importance because of the incredible suffering that it extracts from individuals but also families. Uh, your work has really been part of making it easier to get work done at the clinical level. Can you tell us a little bit about the initiative that you've been involved in? Sure. So really coming from a public health point of view, um, trying to advance um, basically any type of interventions to help the disease has been very much part of my focus and certainly one of the interesting topics has been working on research infrastructure projects. Um, one of the projects that I'm working on actually has its hallmarks, um, the earliest origins to a conference that was established initially back in 2007 after the passing of Leon Thal, a um, colleague of yours at yes. UCSD. And we did this meeting in Las Vegas called the Leon Thal Symposium. And the point of the meeting was really to find ways to accelerate um, therapies to prevent this, this terrible disease. And one of the um, outcomes from this meeting was a, a host of recommendations that um, found its way into the National, Project, National Alzheimer's Project Act. And one of those items was the establishment of a um, national IRB to uh, help Alzheimer's disease clinical trials. To talk about the IRB uh, that is terribly important for ensuring patient safety, the, the, the quality of these clinical trials. But So talk about the IRB and then talk about this national IRB that you're envisioning. Sure. So I mean certainly um, patient ethics has been very much a hallmark of biomedical research for probably the last 50 or 60 years. And over, I think over time, um, NIH has begun to realize that IR, um, patient, patient consent and patient um, uh, protection um, really can be uh, very important to do, but also there has been um, a problem that in tr diseases like Alzheimer's and other rare diseases, which you have to have multiple clinical sites to um, have a study, um, getting through these local institutional um, hurdles has become very much a, a challenge, and it's been sort of a little bit of a damper sometimes for therapy development. So, so NIH basically had created a mandate to um, centralize multi-center studies, and as of last, uh, as actually earlier this year, has suggested that all federally funded um, multi-center trials will have to have a centralized IRB. This dovetailed very nicely with the work that came off of the Leon Thal Symposia, where we were suggesting the ability to have experts who could evaluate Alzheimer's disease trials could really sort of speed up um, these clinical studies and also ensure better patient safety. Yeah, and I th so these are experts. They're looking at a protocol. That protocol is something that they'll understand better. They'll be devoted to making sure the, thing, the work goes quickly. So if I'm a clinical trialist, if I have an idea for a clinical trial, and I know that I'm going to need five different places to do that trial with me because I just can't get enough patients in my own backyard. <clears throat> Currently, I'd have to get each of those sites not just to agree to be part of the trial, but their own local institutional review board would have, their own local IRB would have to approve it. And the, and the, and the quality it would be fine, I'm sure, but there's no necessary expertise in each of those five sites to, to really review the proposal and they take forever. So your proposal, the proposal that comes out of this early symposium is, let's centralize that, let's speed it up, and let's increase, improve the quality. Absolutely, and, and actually this is really sort of following a mandate now by, by NIH, which has really suggested that all multi-center studies are gonna have to follow this. Now, to take this idea a little bit further, um, because a lot of institutions, and there's a lot of capability out there to do centralized IRB, that we are working with a, a commercial partner, Shulman Associates, who has um, great expertise in um, doing these types of studies in the Alzheimer's space. And we are going to marry their 
ethics review process with the, the scientific expertise that NBREC brings, National Biomedical Research Ethics Council, to, to this process. And so we're creating sort of this super model for how we can do more efficient um, uh, human ethics review for these types of studies while also providing the very highest care and safety concerns for volunteers in this type of research. You know, as you talk, I'm just reminded of how um, complex this organism is <clears throat> that's trying to find a treatment for Alzheimer's disease. There's an infrastructure element. Some of the infrastructure has, it's the nuts and bolts of having a clinic that works. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's a doctor that's committed to doing the trial well. It's trial coordinators that work very hard. It's a protocol that's informed by the science, but also by the clinical realities around caring for patients. It's an infrastructure that in ensures the quality of the study, that looks at regulatory issues, that makes sure there is an IRB. There's a whole group of folks that then pull the data together, analyze the data, publish the data, and of course then there's industry that we hope is partnering with us to make this all possible. Talk about the complexity of this process. You're in the middle of it. You know it very, very intimately. What are your thoughts about making the whole thing work better? Yeah, for sure. So um, for our part, um, the National Biomedical Research Ethics Council is a nonprofit that really grew out of this idea coming from experts from industry and academia who saw mm -hmm. sort of a, a necessary need. And we're very grateful for the support of the Alzheimer's Association, the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery um, Foundation, as well as the Canadian Consortium on Neurodegenerative Diseases and Aging to help sort of launch um, sort of a, a specialized public-private partnership to essentially deal with um, a gap, a, a research infrastructure gap. And so it's been very gratifying to see these um, disparate interests come together and coalesce around um, an important topic. It's, it's only one piece, but it's a terribly important piece. Eric, where is the field going to go? What's your thought about the next 10 years of research and, and discovery? That's, uh, that's a terrific question. And I think, you know, as we look at technology and we just look at the increasing complexity in how we even just communicate. Um, I think the, uh, the way that clinical trials are going to be done, the way we do research, is also going to become probably more integrated into our lifestyles. And so um, perhaps it will be more of a seamless transition between sort of normal life and participating and volunteering in research. And so um, in, in moving towards a world where everyday life may actually be um, something that could be used for research, we're really going to have to have specialized ethics review to make sure that um, people's information and data and privacy are all being protected. So I, I think it's, it's exciting, but there's definitely going to be some challenges, some important ethical challenges, and uh, I, I just think it's going to be fantastic. You know, I can imagine a day <clears throat> in which, just like is the case with uh, children's oncology, that essentially every person diagnosed with, uh, with dementia with Alzheimer's disease or uh, for whom memory problems have arisen might be part of a registry, a national registry that would then allow us to both educate those folks, watch over them, make sure the pro quality of their care is, is optimized, but also then make them available for those clinical trials that we're going to need to do to solve the problem. The ethics is going to be a huge part of that and, and even defining how it is that you create the registry and what information that you put into the registry is going to be uh, going to be something that you and your team are going to have to comment on. For sure. Um, I think that's, that's going to be a, a, a very big task for the next 10 years, probably going on, and we, we really look forward to this challenge. We're so proud of you and your work. Era, thanks for being on the program, and we wish you very, very well. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Bill Mobley for The Brain Channel.